Good morning or afternoon, whenever you may be watching this. Springtime. Don't you just love springtime? I do. I really do. Uh, maybe minus the wind, but I love the flowers blooming. Things started turning green and trees budding out. Well, some of them. I've got a lot of brown shrubs and trees that aren't going to bud out after the freeze. But anyway, it's still a time of hope and looking forward to something different. It's kind of um, coming out of winter, looking for something green and hopeful and new. So a week ago, we celebrated Easter. Easter and springtime just go together. But did you know that Easter is celebrated on the first Sunday following the full moon that occurs on or right after March 21st? I did not know that. So this is a time of learning too. Easter is a time of hope and joy. It's kind of the turning point. And especially this year, we're so ready for hope and newness and change and uh, new things, right? We're getting there. Easter is defined in the dictionary as a festival in the Christian church commemorating the resurrection of Christ. That's what we celebrate as Christians, right? And we know that Easter is also about redemption. This word redemption came up recently in our Bible study of Genesis and was used in a way not related to Easter. And this led me to dig deeper into redemption. In Genesis, we see many wrong decisions and choices made by the Bible heroes as God leads them through difficult times to fulfill his plan for his chosen people. We saw how these choices or sins caused so much destruction and delays in God's plan for them. But we also learned how God continually redeemed what sin had destroyed. The definition of redeem is to buy back, to free, or pay a price for redemption. Redemption, a release that occurs when a price is paid. So, a short review. Most of us know this, but this is just to help us to dig deeper. What did God do? Galatians 3.13 tells us that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, by dying on the cross. So the curse of the law, remember all those Old Testament laws, thou shalt not, and how it was impossible for the people to keep them all? Remember how many animals they had to sacrifice for their sins over and over again? Can you imagine? Just when you had sacrificed a perfect lamb for all these sins you've committed and think, oh, I'm covered, I'm covered. And then what would happen? Another sin. Wonder how often they had to do that. Monthly, quarterly? I'm sure it did seem like a curse. The sins of God's people were punished symbolically in the animal sacrifice in the Old Testament. So what did Jesus do? Jesus' death on the cross paid the price for our release from sin. We no longer are controlled by sin. Jesus provided a better way. This was a once and for all sacrifice. So redemption is what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. By his sacrifice, Jesus paid the price, the ransom for our sins. So next, why was this necessary? You know, Romans 3.23 tells us that we've all sinned. We are all born with a sinful nature. Thanks, Adam. We see that sinful nature in toddlers who want what they want, when they want it, and demand it. And if denied, they can throw a pretty impressive fit. Hmm, now that I think about it, sometimes we see that behavior in more than toddlers, don't we? The next verse in Romans 20, uh, 3, 24, it goes on to say that God declares us not guilty when we trust in Jesus who takes away our sins. Okay, so we got the what and the why of redemption. God used the life of his son Jesus as payment for our sins. 
Redemption is what God accomplished on the cross. So, what's the connection between redemption and our salvation? Those terms are used interchangeably sometimes. Salvation involves our acceptance and our acknowledgement of what Christ has done for us. It's our acceptance of His redemption. Salvation includes confession of sins. You first must be aware of your sins, aware of your need for change, your need for God, and you need to ask forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 tells us if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Salvation also includes regeneration, being reborn with God's Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Salvation also includes renewing, daily feeding on his word. I love that Psalms 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. And salvation also includes transformation. The whole chapter five of Galatians tells us how to let God change you and how to reflect the fruits of his Holy Spirit that lives within us. So what did we learn from this research on redemption? The truth about redemption makes salvation possible. But redemption also gives hope when our circumstances in life appear hopeless. God can redeem the wreckage of sinful choices to help us and guide us to His perfect plan and His purpose for each of our lives. When we believe that no sinner is beyond God's grace and no circumstances are beyond God's redemption, we can have hope. Hope, that's what we all want and we all need. God redeems, restores, reconciles, reveals, and reclaims. He sets us free from being controlled by our sinful nature. When we believe who Jesus is, what he did for us, and accept and receive him as Lord of our lives, that's faith. Faith, a commitment of both our mind and our heart. So thank you, Jesus, for your redeeming death and resurrection. Thank you for the salvation you've given at such a cost. Thank you for the hope, joy, and peace found only in you. By your redemption, we've been restored to your original intention for us. Life with you, eternal life with you, and the abundant life now. Thank you. Have a great day.